Welcome friends to the Kuchina Aurora Kitchen Witchery Podcast, another episode of Conversational Witchcraft. And today we have the incredibly interesting, super intriguing Opal Luna visiting with us today. Opal is a crone that has developed her own tradition, fiber magic, a spiritual path for the crafter. She serves as an elder in the pagan community and an ordained minister through the Moon Path Circle. She and her husband, Carl, the drum guy, are active members of the board of directors of Moon Path Grove, a pagan congregation and nonprofit 501c3. She enjoys participating and presenting in various pa- on various pa- pagan topics and rituals, such as an annual ritual in June calling for the protection uh, during hurricane season. What a cool thing. Opal, Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. I'm so excited to, to meet you. I, as I was saying before we started recording, I saw the cover of your book kind of flash on one of my screens. I was scrolling and I was like, oh, fiber magic. How cool is that? Like, <laughs> you, I know so many people who are like crafty crafters. Um, I would not consider myself a crafty crafter. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, I used to sew um, and it was a very big part of my life, but it's not something I've done in over, I don't know, 15, 18 years. Um, and I'll, well, I'm sure that we'll talk more about it's that. It's still there. It's still there. You, yeah. You just have to dig it out. <laughs> Probably. But I know so many people that, especially, you know, through COVID, they started crocheting or they started knitting. Um, I just think that this is such a cool thing. And, you know anything can be magic and everything is magic. So the fact that you turned this or, or that you've incorporated this into your spiritual path, I guess we're going to start from the end and work backwards. How in the world did you figure out that your craft of craft was part of your spiritual practice? Well, when I started uh, learning about the craft and the different magical practices, I was automatically drawn to candle dressing Mm. and kitchen witchery and, you know, uh, these things where you uh, add herbs and oils and, and blend recipes. And I do the same thing in my craft room. Right. I stand there in front of my wall of yarn and I choose colors and I do it because they make me feel good. And so you're doing things very intuitively when you craft and crafters are very passionate people. A hundred percent. Right. Yes. So, so that energy gets into what they make. Right. And it's not just uh, the fiber arts. When I say fiber, I mean, getting down to the very, essence of what something is made of the fiber of being yes your moral fiber you know your everything about you so that yarn that you chose because the color orange made you happy is made of cotton that comes from a plant that offers protection and strength i love that so it it's all sympathetic magic it is, you know, uh, so I'm a kitchen witch um, and, and most of what I do spiritually is kitchen witchery. It's about ingredients. Like you said, it's intuitive. It's working with these plants that are edible, that we then work with their energies and, and put that into the food that we're eating, um, which is definitely a craft, right? I mean, it's it, to, to craft, meaning to take something and put it together to make something else. There's an alchemy there, right? Artisan bread and craft craftsmen, you know, recipes. It's we use the same words for, for uh, crafting and magic and cooking. We use the same words. And that's because way back when, when we were just all humans, (laughs) <laughs> and there was no, you know, religions or whatever. This was just your lifestyle. This is just how you kept your family fed and healthy. Or clothed. So, right. And the, the rosemary that you, and, and thyme that you made that tea to take care of that sore throat, 
you wrapped a little bit and you put it around their neck because and you said a prayer to whoever was listening because why not because why not cover all your bases you right know? right well because these things they have they have energy to them they have innate magical energy is innate spiritual properties when i talk about food i i i, I call it spiritual nutrition, right? So this might have a lot of vitamin C, but it's also got the spiritual nutrition of sun magic or God magic, or, you know, staying connected with, you know, uh, whatever I I'm blanking right now, but we're like, so, so whatever those energies are, I, I love what you said about color that you went over to your craft wall and you look at color and how it makes you feel, but color is vibration as well. Yes, because now you've got chakra work and mm. you've got, you know, all these did the, the vibrations of color magic, a color therapy, um, aromatherapy, the way things smell, you know, um, yeah. the way things feel, the texture. Oh, it, it's it. all layers upon layers of intention that paints that clear picture of that poppet that you end up with. And that, that so, intention that you're putting in it there, like you said, there's so many layers of what we are doing energetically, what we are doing intentionally, whether it is food or sewing or knitting or gardening, you know, I mm-hmm. love these tactile magics. Um, I, I, you know, I've been doing the podcast for a little over a year now, and I've talked to a lot of, a lot of folks and there's something, I don't want to say in the community, but there's, there seems to be people who really practice in, um, an occultist fashion or a, uh, an esoteric fashion, kind of in this stratosphere. And I think mm-hmm. that we all do that. You know, we're all communicating with spirit. We're all communicating with, with the, the beloved dead or the fairy realm in some way or another, but our everyday practices our food and home and right. garden and crafting. And Once it's, you it's see amazing. The magic in yes. that, then that it's no longer something you do um, from seven to nine on Friday nights when you go to the meeting or when you go to the ritual. It's right. what you do every day. It's just a part of your life. The fiber of your life the fiber of your being who you are. Okay. So I'm, I'm, t- I feel like you and I, like, how, ha- like, how have we not met before? I don't, maybe we I have not, not in this lifetime. <laughs> right now, oh, where, where are you in the world? Are you on the East coast? Yes. I'm in South Florida. I'm South in Florida. Fort, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Hence why you do protection magic for hurricanes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah that's- we, this was our um, this will be our eighth year that we will be doing a hurricane protection ritual, wow. and we make a candle. We dress a hurricane protection candle, and we wear it around our necks, and we go through the 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 ritual. And then when we get a hurricane scare, we all get together. We light our candles, and wow. we our motto is. May your windows hold. And then we go, shoo, shoo. And we have turned hurricanes away from our coast. Listen, weather magic is no joke. (laughs) Weather magic is no joke. I have literally been places at festivals. I think we were in the Blue Ridge Mountains at a festival years ago. And there was a huge storm coming in. And here we all are, a bunch of pagans standing in this field in the valley in the Blue Ridge Mountains, and we saw this the 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 wind coming in, and we saw, and all of us were like, nope, and we no, no, and we <laughs> moved it, and we actually watched it, and even as who we were, we're still like, did we seriously just do that? Yeah, did that just happen? Did that just happen? <laughs> hmm, that's pretty crazy. So, so I love I love the fact that you are um, writing a book about, well, you've written a book about this, um, and we're going to mm-hmm. talk more about the book as we get towards the end, but I'm really interested in, oh my goodness. How did you start crafting? What did you start with first? Did you, did you, and this is like a multifaceted question. So we're going to go through all these points, but did you start crafting, like making 
hats and dollies and things like that? Did you start or poppets, things like this first? And then you discovered the witchcraft path or vice versa. And who taught you these crafts? Because most of us don't learn them because we feel like it. They're usually something that we picked up somewhere from someone. Told you it was a big question, big question. Okay. Well, the, the simple answer is my mother's mother, my granny Lula taught me to crochet when I was eight years old. Mm, I love that. I used to love to go upstairs to her bedroom. She used to let me play in her button drawer and she taught me how to make a granny square. And I thought she had made up the pattern because that was what I called her granny. <laughs> Found out <Of> later <laughs> that it, it, it was just something that she taught me. And it was uh, just a, a lovely escape, calming, comforting time so my crochet has always been spiritual in that way in that it's been a comfort to me and a stress relief you know is that also so, ancestral magic that you're doing because it connects you with an ancestral for lack of a better term thread to yeah. your granny it's yeah my grandmother on my mother's side taught me to crochet she was i knew her in life mm -hmm. my granny on my dad's side um, died before I was born, but I'm named after her. Oh. And I, I have connected to her whenever I'm cooking. Was it she the my, Italian grandma? My Italian grandma. Yeah. <laughs> I connect to her when I'm cooking <laughs> and I connect to my hillbilly grandmother. I, I'm half Italian, <laughs> half hillbilly because my, my father's mother was born in Tuscany and my mother's mother was born in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Wow. <laughs> so wow. I got the hoodoo and the strega and I, I got it. all that going they're on. All, they're all the same. <laughs> They're yes. all and, right and that's why I'm old world, you know, right. because I, the roots go back for generations. For sure, I love that. Whether they called themselves witches or not, I'm I'm calling myself one. <laughs> yeah, I say that I'm a um, a kitchen witch from a long line of kitchen witches who happen to be Catholic. You know, uh, the the Italian Catholic kitchen witch. You know, I mean, my grandmother. You you ate for everything. She, there was a recipe for everything. There was a meal for everything, whether it was a celebration or a sadness, or there was, there was a recipe for mm -hmm. everything, you know? Um, and there was a reason why she added herbs at different times and why she yes. stirred a certain way yes. because superstitions, they call them superstitions, it's magic. but it's spell work. It's, it's magic. hundred percent. It's spell work. Okay. So you learned to crochet from, from your granny. Yes. Uh, so as I was going, growing up, I was a teenager in the seventies and I made, you know, um, uh, vests and, you know, hippie stuff and headbands ponchos and, everything, ponchos and everything. Yes, I love know. it. I love it. <laughs> and then when I started having babies, I made baby blankets and this and that, you know, and I used to like to guess, I used to like to guess the sex. This was before sonograms. Yep. So I would like to, I, I would like to, um, divine the sex of the baby by the color of the yarn that I picked out. Oh, <laughs> and that's I, great. Yeah. And I used to bring, you know, like pink blankets to baby showers and everybody would go, uh, and you're like, I'm the, right. The pink uh, jumped out at me and the, the, a baby girl was born. Yes. <laughs> so, I got a reputation. <laughs> so were you a practicing witch at that time? Nope. Just a nice Italian girl from the Bronx. Oh, you're from the Bronx, from <laughs> yeah. New York. Yeah, I was born in uh, up upper, like uh, um, near Westchester, uh, oh, Yonkers awesome. area, Van that's Cortland awesome. Park, and right, right off Broadway. My family, yeah, my great. mom was born in the Bronx, and my dad was born in Queens, and I grew up out on Long Island with my my husband. Also, grew up on Long Island, and we live up in um, New Hampshire now. Uh, but uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, wow. So we all talk with our hands and <laughs> right, fold right. our pizza and it's a thing. Um, and now you're in Florida. There's no pizza in Florida. I'm sorry. No, not really. No, no, no. There's nothing you can do. You got to make it yourself. That's, that's yeah. it. There's no other option. You have to make it yourself. Make I'm sorry. Um, okay. So, so continue talking about how, uh, 
you you were not a witch when like the finding of the witchcraft path you started crafting and crocheting and long and time long yeah, to, your long whole time. life it was until um i uh, i reconnected with a friend from junior high school and uh she said oh you got to come with me to uh this drum circle and i'm like okay oh, Zara. So, hippies. <laughs> so we went to now to quest a drum circle is huge it's in it's uh in south florida and um there's like 500 drummers it's wow. huge and they do it on the equinoxes and solstices and it's wonderful it's so we stuff. went yeah so we oh, went yeah. to this and i was like oh this is cool my husband the drum guy the drum guy he hit his path running the next morning he was like i want to make my own drums so now now he makes drums i love <laughs> he it his own drums was that the first so, time he had been to a drum circle yes <laughs> but but a drummer in terms of a traditional drummer musician nope no you just went to this drum circle and he was like that's and it that i'm in it. forever i'm a drummer i love so. it i love that so he oh, drums, he makes drums, he makes mead. We're crafty folks. Yes. And he does wood burning and woodworking and things like that. And yes. then I do the softer crafts. <laughs> with so, the so you go to this drum circle and your husband's all in and you're like, what? What's so your the same reaction? friend goes, well, if you like that, there's a study group that meets on Thursdays. Um, uh, I don't want to go alone. So... <laughs> We went with her. It was a cups group at the local UU church, right? The coveted of Unitarian Universalist pagans. So yes. we were there for 10 years. <laughs> Wait, were, was that a cups in New York? No, in Florida. In Florida. Because we used to go to cups when we lived in New York. Yeah, they're all over the yeah. country. Yeah. Right, okay. Right. Okay. So, so here I was. I was part of that group for 10 years. And then my, my friend um graduated from uh, divinity school right, and right. we said oh we can start our own pagan church why not why not why not so there you go that, and so yeah and you know the whole thing of it was that okay so i was making soup one uh new year's day and i was channeling my 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 grandmother and see after that drum circle then everything it's like it got turned on or the tap open, something yes. open, yes. right? So I was receiving all these things. So I'm next thing you know, I'm at the computer googling uh, Italian witchcraft, Strega, Raven Gramasi. What else do I have to read? I read everything, right? And um, we decided to go to a Florida Pagan Gathering. Yeah. Which since I'm not, I've been a headliner there. Now I was just a visitor. Right. Right. How long ago was this? <laughs> How long ago was this? Maybe like uh, six years ago. Six that's or, it? Six or seven years ago, yeah. Oh yeah. my God, that's yeah. amazing. Ten, ten years ago, ten years ago, we went to Tequesta. So this has all happened in the last 10 years. Okay, this is so fantastic. I think, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to say this with the utmost love and respect. I am 42 years old and I think... I hear from younger people that they feel like they have failed because they're 26 and they haven't gotten where they want to. They don't have a book deal. They don't have this and they don't have that. And I'm like, dude, I didn't have any of that at 26 either. Right. So, so I think there is, and I have, I have a friend who, as you identify as a crone, she identifies as a crone and she, she's amazing. Her name is Matuka Moonbear and she runs a crone circle, a crone call once a month. Um, and I'm like, oh, I want to join. And she's like, you're not old enough. Um, I'm like, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not a mom and I'm past that. Um, but anyway, I think there is a missing place in our community, even as the witches, even as the pagans, I think there is a missing place in our community for the crone. And the fact that you are here and you are writing this book about your craft and your journey of fiber magic and what you've done in just the last few years speaks so deeply to the, the boundless, infinite knowledge, joy, and journey of the crone phase of life that I have to congratulate you. 
I have well, to. And, I, and you, you, you are. Know, a, I spent I spent those twenties and thirties um, um, raising my family. You know, I have four children. I have wow. nine grandchildren. Wow. Yeah, and uh, I, wow. and I now, and all four of them are over thirty, married, with families of their own. Mm-hmm. So I'm free now, and I'm She's still like, check healthy. done, and I'm done. healthy, and I'm smart. So I'm going to do me now. Yes. And there's no reason why you can't. No. You know, I uh, I got a job in a grocery store when I was 36, and I retired with enough money when I was 56 to uh, live the rest of my life because I really put my mind to it, and I got into management, and I'd made my fortune. And now I'm spending that fortune <laughs> Uh, as a full-time fiber magician and if anywhere along the line i had said i'm too old for that this is my motto okay another motto i I love it i'm a crone so i can have as many as i Um, want it's a mantra (laughs) it's a mantra it's a mantra ask your five years from now self what you wish you had done Because I hear it too often. Well, I should have started that five years ago. I should have started that 10 years ago. Well, five years ago is now. Right. 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 I like to work backwards. I like to say, where do I want to be? And work backwards from there. Well, if I want to be here, then I need to do this. Then I need to do this. Then I need to do that. Oh, crap. I I should have started that last week. I better get my ass in gear. Right. right. Like I, what an amazing way to put it and say, ask your future self what they need you to do today. What does she need? What does he need? What do they need yeah. for you to do for them today? Do you ever have those moments now? Like I, I do them in much shorter periods of time, but I'll think about, and this might be a good thing to do. Like, as we're talking about that, what a great idea is to think about what you might need tomorrow or what you might need three days from now and go, Oh, you know, I think Friday, I have a shit crazy ass week this week. I'm not going to have any time to do anything, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to make sure that I have a casserole in the freezer so that when I get home on Friday night, I'm going to pop that in the oven, take a shower. And by the time I'm done, my food will be ready. And it happens all the time. I'll do something like that for myself and go, well, thank you, past Dawn. I really appreciate that you did that for me. And I'm like, you're so welcome today, Dawn. Like that's, you laugh, but I actually, I actually have those conversations out loud with myself. Um, it's sad. You Uh, should be proud of yourself. You you deserve it because yeah, people don't think about that. And then you're just like, I it was too much. I was too stressed. I couldn't get it all done. Like an excuse is as good as a job. Well done. No, no, no. Oh, I right love that. Now, in excuse. my home. That. Okay, there's another one. Of, there's we have another, we have another motto. Another <laughs> motto. I love it so much. I'm going to write these down. <laughs> right now, I have uh, uh, the, the mead hall. Uh, the back of our house, oh we God. have a long table and we have, you know, it looks like a shenanigans in there. It's like uh, all kinds of stuff, crap hanging from the walls. That's the mead hall. It is right now decorated and set up for a hand fasting that I'm doing on Sunday. Wonderful. Because if I set it up now, I'll know if I've got everything and I still have time to go out and get it. Preparation is key. Why do people not get this? And when I wake up on Sunday morning, I can think all about the spirituality of the hand fasting yes. and be ready for it mentally and not be running around. I need a light bulb. I need a this. A hundred percent. And it keeps you. So if you can apply those skills of preparation, preparedness, planning, and you apply them to your whole damn life, you wind up in a situation where you are right now, being able to live the life you want and deserve in joy and peace and not sitting here going, oh, my, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe I don't know. Right? 
I have to applaud you again. I mean, that's just, you're freaking awesome, Opal. Like, <laughs> I want to be you when I grow up. That's a, you're, okay. you're, that's, that's. And you've got time. I'm 64 years old and still going strong. It's not old. No, it is not even, I mean, then you see people like it today, you know, again, in their 70s and their 80s. And they're, they're doing the same thing. They're living their authentic life. And, and it's amazing to see people doing that in general. You know, right. we are seeing that so often, but I, I am absolutely effing floored that you've only been doing this for le- ten, 10 years, 10 years. Yeah. I knew I always wanted to write a book. That was like the beginning and end of my bucket list. And so I wrote a little, a uh, self-published a book on fiber magic, and uh, it just cost me a lot of money. I, a I, beast, yeah. I know. I uh, and I, I, I lovingly refer to it as the pamphlet now because it's just like this little thin book. It's all I can afford in black and white. <laughs> me too. Me too. This is my first book. I'm gonna write a book. I can do it. I can do it. And it was like this little itty bitty. Yeah, it was it enough like- to get the attention of Llewellyn. Yes. So yes. that's how I tell people, put it out there. Yes. Give it to the universe. Because, you know, what? Right. You, well, nobody's going to knock on your door and say, hey, did you happen to want to write a book? That's right. <laughs> look, at, look at everything that you're doing in terms of like manifesting that life. And and again, that's what I'm saying. Like, I can't believe you've only been, a, is, is would it be correct to say you've been a practicing witch for 10 years or so? Yes. There are people I know in the pagan and witchcraft community that have been practicing for 25 plus years and haven't been able to grasp these simple, basic manifestation comp, like, like, um, principles, you know, Mm. I, I, that's just, it's just absolutely incredible to me. And, and here you are with this book, this amazing book on fiber magic. So we're going to talk about that. When we come back from our break, we need to take a super quick break and hear from our awesome sponsors. Yes. And we'll be right back and we'll learn all about your amazing book, fiber magic. We'll be right back. Welcome back to an episode of conversational witchcraft. We are hanging out with the absolutely intriguing, really just bright sunshine, uh, Opal Luna, um, the author of fiber magic. Okay. So let's talk about this awesome book because now we know you've been not, I mean, what other crafts do you do besides crochet? Do you, do you sew? Do you weave baskets? What other fibers do you work with to create things? I dabble in a lot of things. I like to do macrame. I like to do embroidery. I like weaving. Um, I just, um, and I sew enough why you like you, I used to sew, uh, quite a bit. Like when the kids were little, I made all their clothes, you know, things like that, but I kind of got out of the habit. Now I'll just like make linings for bags and things like that and sewing. Mm -hmm. But, uh, my passion and love is crochet. I crochet every day, every day. I would love, I think the, the look of crochet, I, I adore, I love, I have a bunch of crochet blankets that people have made for me. It's not something I've ever done. Um, it's not some, someone would have to teach me, like, I don't have the brain capacity to, to figure it out on my own. And I think that it is, the patterns are so beautiful. And visually I prefer the look of crochet to knitting, um, Mm -hmm. because of that tight, the tight weave in the knitting. Um, And I love like the lacy, beautiful patterns you can get with crochet. Um, I just think they're, they're fantastic. Uh, And yes, I did. I used to sew a million years. This is something no one knows about me because it's like in my before life, like I never, (laughs) you know, I mean, there's like a handful of people that know that I used to sew. Um, I used to be very active back in my late teens and early twenties in the SCA. If anyone knows what the SCA is, it's the Society for Creative Anachronisms. And it was a couple of years of my life where we would do reenactments. And now I'm much more like a Ren Fair fantasy girl, like if I'm going to get dressed up in a costume. But to be fair, now everything is work and I don't do anything for fun. So <laughs> I, I used to do that for fun and I would make all of my own costumes. 
Wonderful. Um, and I would, you know, I would spend hours in the basement and I, uh, was taught by a family member who was in turn taught by our grandmother. Um, but we, I mean, it's been years and years, but I still have my sewing machine because I feel like I can't get rid of it. It doesn't work, but it's, it's in the closet. It's, <laughs> it's moved from New York to Massachusetts to New Hampshire. It doesn't work. The bobbin threader doesn't work. I can't get rid of it. <laughs> it's, I can't get, I feel like breaks my heart, but I'm not going to ever sew again. Um, but there was a time where that was really part of my identity. How much so? I mean, obviously your crafting is such a part of your identity. You said you crochet every day. What does that practice look like? And how does that make you feel on a daily basis? Well, I, I think that um, I'm a, I'm a pretty chill person because I crochet every day. <laughs> I, can get, I, I can just relax. And mm. it's such a sense of accomplishment. Mm. Things And so many people want things. And I want to make things. Here, I'll, I'll show you what I'm working on now. This is a little bear. This oh. is, okay, so he's got, he's, he's, I'm starting the helmet. It's going to have horns. He's going to be a he's Viking, a Viking bear. bear. And I'm working on his, oh uh, I'm working on his beard here. So his beard is going to come around like this. Oh, so oh, I got suggest. this idea. I got this idea because the hand fasting from this weekend is uh, Lupercalia hand fasting. So they wanted, I made the hand fasting cords and the hand fasting cords were purple and red with Norse runes. So I looked I looked at the bead shop and they have beard beads. Yes. Beads that go into the, yes. with the runes on them. Yes. So I used, I used six of them for the hand fasting cords. And then I got this idea. I'm going to do rune brooms. <laughs> I See, love that, it so much. That's just how my mind works. And now I'll make the rest of those beads I'll make into rune brooms and I'll take them to, the next event I do. And yeah, see no, I'm going to need one. I'm going to need a Viking bear with these beads. Okay. For my <laughs> husband who I call bear privately, I'm saying this on the internet. Nobody say it out loud because I shouldn't <laughs> be saying that on the internet, but I call him bear and he's a giant Viking man. So, uh, that, and he's got the beard. So that's the funniest thing I've ever, I've ever, <laughs> like if I saw that somewhere, I'll be like, <laughs> Shit, I need to buy this right now. That is, and your hat. I mean, your hat is fantastic. Yeah, I'm working on, which way? I'm working on hats. I see the hats in the background for those of you who are there's, listening, not watching. There's also a, there's also a mermaid behind A mermaid. You. She's awesome. Ah, I got accepted to be part of the Authors Fest 2022 in the Delray Beach Library. So Fiber Magic is going mainstream. Ooh next you girl going so, mainstream <laughs> so here's my idea i'll probably have quite i'll probably have a few people come up and and offer to pray for me but i Me i will too. say i will say thank you yes bright blessings on your household as well yes and yes. then <laughs> sell them a book yes. so they can burn it i don't care <laughs> I don't, I don't, you know, we, we get that we get that a lot because my my business like my I make olive oil. Like that's Kachina oh. kitchen witchery. We make olive oil that is infused with herbs and spices, but they're also infused with magical properties. So oh, we do, wonderful. we do meditation and we do, you know, we do visualization over every bottle, but you can buy our product in whole foods. So like Susie soccer mom is buying this protection magic olive oil and she's putting it all over a pasta. <laughs> so then I go to a pagan event and they're like, Ooh, this is protection magic. I'm like, yeah, because everybody gets the idea of putting love into something, right. whether it's food or crocheting or a blanket. Somebody makes, if, if, a, if a Christian or a Catholic or a, a Buddhist or a, a Jewish person makes a blanket for somebody, for their new baby, that's filled with love and intention and hope and joy. It doesn't matter what God they pray to. No. Right, that's all. the magic. Right. And I, uh, you know, if I make a, I have a unicorn poppet. 
I've I sold tons it. of unicorn poppets to all types of people. Yes. Some people I know to ask, do you want the cinnamon stick spine inside the unicorn? Because that's really nice. It heals you up. Yes. <laughs> and they go, yes, I'll have the cinnamon stick spine. Yes. You know, some some yes. I wouldn't, you know, put it in there because it's a waste of cinnamon. <laughs> What we're talking about is we said in the beginning, this, the fabric and the fiber of who we are as people, it is about love and it is about intentionality and it is about energy exchange. And the idea of something where you're saying, oh, we're going mainstream, you, <laughs> what you do and how you do it is universal, right? And most people will resonate with that. We get people that are like, what are you, some kind of witch? And I'm like- There's something missing in, in the world today. And that's what it is. Because once upon a time, everything was handmade because you didn't go to the store and buy everything, you know? And so you you got that hand-me-down blanket that your mother was wrapped in. And, the, and it, it there was just that energy in the house that's missing now. It's replaced by Wi-Fi and- uh, you know, internet and things like that. That's the wrong kind of energy. <laughs> it is an energy, but it's different. Um, but when you when you make something by hand, then you're giving a piece of yourself as well. And you're giving all that, like you said, the well wishes and the prayers and everything. And, the, and, your vibration. and people, people feel that. Like yes. We did a uh, last uh, November, we did Camelot Days, which uh, was a three week Renaissance fair. Love it. The fairies hung out in front of my tent the whole time, and I loved yes, it. They yes, played yes. my husband's drums. And yes. <laughs> everybody, look over there! Look at those! She's got she's got a a doll of me over there because I had like mermaids and fairy puppets. I love it so much. <laughs> but I sold forty books, and I sold them to young people who said, "My granny, my grandmother used to do this." And I, I, you know, I never, I never thought to ask her to teach me. And, and I was like, don't oh. worry about it. I'm your strega nona. I will teach you. Um, I have a, a Facebook group called the Fiber Magic Coven. And great support. The people on there, they show everything they're working on. If someone has a question, we answer it. Uh, I'll go live on there to show them a technique if, uh, you know, you're having a problem. And I have a YouTube channel too, Fiber, Fiber Magic Everything. Fibermagic.com is my website. Mm -hmm. You can get everywhere from there. Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook. I love it. YouTube. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And you know, it's interesting that you said that, that you sold a bunch of books at this festival and it was mostly to young people. And, you know, I have a handful of young people, I would say, you know, 25 and younger in my life through my business, through some relatives and the COVID pandemic has been very, very, very difficult for young people. Um, someone like myself, I'm very happy to stay home. I'm really great to be home with my oh, cat. The thing and... got canceled. What a shame! <laughs> oh, you mean I have to do everything virtually and I don't have to put on pants? Okay. <laughs> I haven't worn shoes since last May. Yeah, like I spent 42 years wearing shoes and bras, and now I'm like, screw that. Um, so, so I'm very happy to to be home and cook a meal, and you know, to to enjoy a little bit of a slower pace. In, in my life. I mean, there are definitely, don't get me wrong. This has been the worst two years ever. We've uh, had a yeah. very, very hard time. Um, we all have dealt with quite a bit. Um, but I think that there's, there's a group of young people that have been hit very, very hard because they haven't been taught the skills of cooking or they haven't been taught the skills of crafting. And they don't have that, the idea of being stuck at home they can't amuse themselves. It's they can't hard. entertain themselves. It's hard. And so there seems to be, at least my observation, and maybe you've observed the same thing, is that there's kind of this wave of young people coming into, definitely coming into the craft of witchcraft and finding the path of paganism um, because it makes sense to them. Mm -hmm. um, but also this influx of learning to cook learning to use our hands, learning to make things and using things like crochet or knitting to help manage some of that anxiety. Yes. You know, um, my, my cousin, she took up knitting, um, 
because she was like, when I'm not busy, I scroll on my phone and it's so detrimental to my mental health that I start, I, I get upset. So she started knitting yeah. so she wouldn't go to, and, and she knit my husband, the most beautiful sweater. And are you finding, I'm sorry, scarf, not sweater. Are you finding that there is this influx as well of young people finding you, what you're doing and your message? Absolutely. Yeah. The, the, <sighs> So many people think of the of the grandmother sitting in the rocking chair crocheting, but if you look at the crochet groups that are on Facebook and, and Instagram, these are younger and younger people. These are not old people, then they're really getting into it. And they're crocheting different things. Like I really found my niche crocheting when I found the pagan community. You know, because I love to make Viking bears and chakra dolls and fairy poppets and things like that that wouldn't really have a market. You know, I mean, I'm just not going to make dish towels, dish towel poppers and, you know, mm. toilet paper covers or whatever mm. they, you're supposed to crochet. No. no. And I mean, there's dark Cart cottage core, haunted cottage core yes. crochet. Yeah. Yes. Skulls. And yes. I, so I <laughs> love that so much. I saw somebody had like a wrap. Um, so we have our products in a local store. It's our local crafters here in New Hampshire. And um, there's a woman there who does, she does these like, like, like wraps, like sweater wraps that are beautiful, delicate crocheted skulls. And I'm like, I'm going to need that. <laughs> I need one in every color. <laughs> you know, that's amazing. Right. What a cool thing. And that makes it contemporary it, to, to be appealing mm -hmm. to so many other people. And then to bring to that, to dovetail in the spiritual aspect, also the meditative qualities. That's why I was asking, what does your practice look like? And you said earlier, you crochet and it keeps you chill. <laughs> it does. Right? <laughs> right. Why is yeah. that? Because you're not thinking about anything else, but that hook going in and out and grabbing that yarn and what you're going to make and how it's going to be used. It's like it occupies your mind and keeps you from thinking about, you know, just the stress of the day. It's a great way to unwind mm -hmm. and it's better than watching TV. You can do it while you watch TV and you end up with a thing <laughs> at the end of the movie. <laughs> you right, know, you right, actually have something right. to show for it. Right. Which yeah. again, it gives you a tactile thing and a sense of accomplishment. So it's great. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of meditation. I meditate myself as often as I can, which is not often enough but it is very difficult to discipline yourself to sit in stillness and right. find that space of calm, but to sit in activity and Moving find meditation a space of calm. is just as beneficial as long yes. as you're doing it mindfully, mindfully. You know? And because, then isn't this so perfect for that? Yes. And, and I have to do that because if I'm making a healing poppet for somebody, they don't want my crazy in there you know they don't want yes. me thinking about what happened at work the other day or whatever who i'm mad at right. um so you have to clear your mind so you have to you have to take that moment where you sit down you breathe make yourself a nice cup of tea or that glass of wine you know whatever yep. you're into and you just relax yourself it's good for you yeah. fill yourself up with that energy yeah so it doesn't deplete you and, and um, it's just like a Reiki practitioner that gets that energy flowing through them so that the, it's not your energy that's working. It is the universe's energy that is working. So you're just a conduit from the universe to that teddy bear or blanket or whatever and you can fill that up and still be filled yourself so you're going to feel refreshed after you finish fiber magic if you're doing it right you're you're not going to feel depleted mm -hmm. and if you do that every day 
It just yeah. comes naturally. Oh, I love that so much. And then you're also creating something that is shareable. So you're creating a practice that's healthy and, and restorative for your mind, body, spirit, right. Mm -hmm. Connects you with spirit, connects you with higher self, connects you with you know, guides. And I mean, how many times have you downloaded some sort of a spiritual message while you are doing your practice of crochet? Right. Right. So you're opening this sort of third eye at the same time that you're grounding because you're sitting in one place, but you also are filling up this item with all that good energy. And then you give it away and you will continue a connection with that item and with that person. Mm -hmm. There's times when um, something that I made for somebody a while back pops into my head. So that's my cue to send it a little extra zhuzh because it's needed in some way. Mm -hmm. So I say that my work comes with a maintenance plan. (laughs) Oh, I love that so much. I love that so much. So are these the kind of things that, that in writing this book, in writing the, this amazing book on fiber magic and your practice of fiber magic that you kind of say, this is how to, these mm-hmm. are my practices. What can we expect yes. when we sit down and, and read this book? You expect 70 plus projects that have a preparation, oh. a magical as well as material preparation, wow. um, you know, activity and then a blessing or use actual some of them actually have spell work that you do as you make it wow oh that's wonderful the sigils um i you know when i first the the lesson the biggest lesson i learned by writing this book was to codify my thoughts collect them and organize them and get other people to understand them. Mm -hmm. Because when I first mentioned that I want to crochet sigils, uh, some people would say, how do you crochet a sigil? That's ridiculous. It's just a mark on a paper. And I'm like, well, wait, no. A sigil is a big energy that is put down into a small place and released when necessary. So, if you are systematically taking that big idea so like peace and putting it as you make your little peace sign medallion then you have created a sigil and if you've made it from cotton bamboo hemp you can burn it just like you would paper wow. or you can put it inside a bag to to you know or inside keep a jacket with you. Yeah. to keep with you, or you can give it to someone else that needs peace in their lives. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And, and so next thing wow. you know, chapter nine, advanced fiber magic, crocheting sigils. <laughs> but again, like that's, that it's like you said, oh, it might sound a little crazy at the first thought of it, but the truth is it's really easy to write a sigil down on a piece of paper and tear it out on a notebook. Yeah. Right we're still putting a bunch of energy into that, but but it can be done very mindfully, you know, Correct. but but the process of it is simple. If you were to explain that to someone and the amount of time that it takes is not as lengthy as crocheting this thing that has more staying power that you could be very intentional about the colors. You could be very intentional about the stitch that you're using. I don't know, as we're talking about this, I don't know if you can hear my cat, He's fine. He, he's, he's like, hello, pay attention hello, to me. Hello, you're not um, paying attention to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But well, the, like the, the intentionality little, of that is so important. One of the sigils is a little angel. And um, you can, if you took cotton thread, you would have the protection and strength of cotton. And if you dyed it with onion peels, you would have the properties of the onion right vanishing right? so of negativity more. and all yeah. that right wow. so if you make it into a little angel that is a guardian angel wow wow so that's why i'm what i mean about the layers of the embellishment 
the fiber, first of all, what is it made of? What are you using? What the color? Da, da, da. Then the shape of it, the actual making of it, and then the embellishment of it. Because you could put little amethyst buttons on that angel, whatever. Right. You could sew it into something, right? So you can sew it into a jacket or you could sew it into your pillowcase, you know, so that it, right. it has a permanence. You know, I think these things, because they're so, they're real, they're, they're tactile, they're, they're of the earth that again, getting back to the beginning of the conversation where they are so solid, I think is the word I'm looking for. So solid. I call them tangible, imp- tangible expressions of your intention. Oh of my you. goodness. I love that so much. Tangible expressions, expressions of, your, of intention. your intention. That again, you can keep or you can give, it can be given and handed down. And, and these are things that I don't think most people or most witches think about, right? We think in terms of stones and herbs, and we don't think about what makes up our clothing and our furniture. And but our, you know, our- there's been, there's been prayer shawls and belts and, um, yes. you know, indigenous people always knew this. They always adorn themselves with their spirituality. So we need to get back to it. We need to get back to the earth, back to oh the mother. My- and I this is a, a good way to do it. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. I I am just so happy that we got to talk because my brain is like wide open to this. And, and this conversation is just more than I could have ever expected. You are fantastic. Oh, well, like oh, I, I am just overjoyed that we got to spend this time together and Okay. So where can, you mentioned your website earlier, let's be more formal about it. Where can people find your book? Where can they find you online? And do you sell your amazing items? Absolutely. If you go. (laughs) Yeah, she does. Yeah, Yeah. she does. So to get the book, I just happen to have a copy right here. To get the book, you can go to Llewellyn.com, you can go to Amazon.com, you can go to Walmart, you can go to Barnes and Nobles, it's everywhere. There's an ISBN number on the back and you can get it anywhere right, they right. sell books. So you, you can go to can, your local bookstore and you can ask And you can for request it. it. They can they can absolutely perfect. Um, get perfect. It for um to to uh get a hold of me. Go to fiber magic with a K mm-hmm. dot com. Fiber magic with a K dot com. And like you said earlier, it's fiber magic everywhere, right? Facebook, everywhere. everywhere. But so once if somebody you go to fiber magic dot com, you'll be welcomed. You'll have, you'll, um, have a, uh, a link to the fiber magic coven. If you'd like to join oh, a link that. to the Instagram and uh, sign up for the newsletter because I write a newsletter three oh. times a month. And, and your wares can be purchased there? There is uh, an events page with where I'm going to be, where you can buy from me personally. And then there's a page where I have a form you fill out to get started. Um, look at my Instagram, see what kind of things I make, challenge me send me an email let's talk what do you need why do you need this poppet i don't i'm you know i make i have an inventory that i bring to craft shows but what i really like to do is to connect to people and make something for them so if some kitchen witch needed a fabulous hat like you're wearing right now yeah all she would have to do would be to to ask you and then we can have what i need you can pick the colors. You can pick the embellishments. You can pick everything. I don't know if I'd ever take it off. For those of you who are just listening to this and you're not watching the video, she's the most amazing crocheted, like from what I can see, it looks like lavender and purpley and it's beautiful. This yes. soft, cozy witch hat that I literally think I would, I would live in. Um, and I'm, I'm going to have to have one. Oh, my friend. Okay. So final question. Uh And I ask this to all of my guests. It is nothing to do with your book or your practice. 
It's just my signature question I ask everybody. Okay. I am a kitchen witch. So if you had to choose and have one meal made for you in a magical way by this kitchen witch, what would it be and why? It would be pasta vazoo. Pasta vazoo. <laughs> I have some in my refrigerator right now. <laughs> I'll change I'm it for that. <laughs> so I will tell you that's okay. Tell me why. Well, um, my my grandmother who came over from Italy never learned to speak English, just stayed in the apartment her whole life. My father used to raise, and this is in the Bronx when there was empty lots. He used to raise tomatoes mm -hmm. in the empty lot and take them home to her so that she could make soup. And he used to tell me the story that Campbell's pork and beans were three cans for a nickel and she could make them taste like heaven because <laughs> she had nine kids and she had to make a big pot of soup. So they ate the pasta fazool all the time. It was beautiful. Oh, that's amazing. So it's so funny when I have someone give me something that someone else has also said, like, this is my, fa the, my favorite thing. I haven't had it since my grandmother passed away. Um, Christopher Penzak has asked me repeatedly to make <laughs> him pasta fazool. And it's something his mom used to make. And um, I, so we live nearby and I keep <gasps> saying, I'm going to make it for him. And he's like, yeah, please. And I never do. I made a big oh, batch this weekend. I wait. hope he's not listening. I made a big batch this weekend. <laughs> I drove past his house today and I didn't drop it off. He's going to be pissed. So <laughs> all I have to do is come to Vermont. We can sit down. Yeah, well, we're, <laughs> we're in Christopher? New Hampshire. If you go to Vermont, New Hampshire, I won't be there. New Hampshire, I'm sorry. But yeah, so <laughs> all I have to yeah, do? Come here. <laughs> come here. I'll make a big pasta for Joel. So we say pasta fajol, not pasta fajol, and yeah. it's four ingredients. That's it. Mine, mine is four <laughs> ingredients, and it's here's my funny story about pasta fajol. Uh, when I married my husband, I was like, I, I, I'm very seasonal in the way I cook, and it was like the first cold day in November, and I was like, it's pasta fajol. I have to have pasta fajol. This is what I have to do tonight, and um, I, he, he had said repeatedly. I won't eat it. I won't eat it. I won't eat it. My mom made it once when I was a kid and it was gross and I hated it and I won't eat it. And I went, okay, okay. no problem. So I make a big pot of pasta visual and he comes home from work. He's like, what? Oh my God. What is it? it smells so good. Oh, it smells so good. And I was like, he's like, what is it? I'm like, don't worry about it. And he's like, oh, what is it? I'm like, just don't worry about it. He's like, oh, it's delicious. What we're going to eat it. What, what is it? Sits down. He takes one bite. He's like, all right, what is this? This is amazing. What is it? And I go, it's pasta visual. <laughs> he looks at me, he looks at me, looks down in his bowl, looks back up at me, and with big puppy dog eyes, he goes, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So from now on, that was like the, the beginning of our marriage. I was like, so from now on, when I say I'm gonna make something, you're always gonna try it. And he's like, always, I will always try everything. I will never, I will never not try something ever again. <laughs> And for the most part, he's been great. He even tried Brussels sprouts like three times. And he's like, nope, not for me. I'm fine. He tried it. I'm good. Okay. But pasta fajol for my friend, Opal. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to write it down. So basically I put the, the, your, you know, the thing you would want, I'll put that on the show notes. So, and put link it to a recipe. And if anybody wants to make pasta fajol in your honor, they absolutely can. That um, would be wonderful. So we're going to put all of your information on the show notes so people will be able to find you at fabricmagic.com. I'm sorry, fibermagic.com. Um, they can buy the book through Llewellyn, Llewellyn Publishing, um, or wherever books are sold. Mm -hmm. Opal Luna, you are just an absolute freaking delight. Uh, oh, you would so give me fun. a reason to go to Florida and I don't want to go to Florida. So, but I would give you a reason. <laughs> you, you would give me a reason to go. Um, and you're fantastic. And I thank you so, so much for joining me on Conversational Witchcraft. This has been an absolute blast. And until next time, my friends, I leave you with many blessings and so much gratitude. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.